Hey, what is going on guys? Lethal Flux here today and I'm bringing you a deck profile of um, my 5th place locals prophecy. It was a uh, full house at our locals the other day and it was, I believe, 56 people and um, I was at table 1, had the opportunity to get 1st uh, or 2nd depending on the tiebreaker and I choked, oh, I choked and I got, um, I ended up getting 5th place which was um, not too bad so I'm proud of myself. I like the deck a lot, it runs really well and I think it's definitely a... Uh, a good deck this format still even without judgment um, this deck is still very very powerful with being able to recycle fate and with world of prophecy coming out as well this deck is just nuts and I definitely think it's a huge contender this format until the next ban list comes out maybe it'll get hit on the next ban list hopefully not it's one of my favorite decks that I've ever built so without any further ado let's get into the deck profile so to start things off of course you're gonna have to be running your three main boss monsters I only run one World of Prophecy, and the um, reason being, if you draw it, it really sucks. Like, you run traps like Phoenix, Wing, Wind Blast, and you can always discard it, but you don't always have those cards at your disposal. You really want to search it out and summon it with, uh, or not search it out, just summon it with Temperance of Prophecy um, whenever you can. And for the other two, you probably guessed already, if you haven't by now, it's High Priestess of Prophecy. Um, I was doing one, but I definitely do like two, because you run three Temperance, and it makes it to where you have three targets instead of... Just the two for um, your Temperance of Prophecy. High Priestess is a very good card this format and with the ability to just pop things whenever. And um, it's pretty big too and with power you can just run pretty much anything over. So yeah, definitely I like two High Priestess of Prophecy over one and World of Prophecy. And I've heard a lot of people actually like two of this, but you know, I think one is the perfect number. I, I don't like two at all. Two is Two is really bad for me. In my experiences, anyway. And then let's have the uh, the tutors of the deck, which is probably guessed by now already as well. Three Blue Boy, um, Spellbook Magician of Prophecy. He's the Stratos of the deck, and he's at three, which is awesome. And three Temperance of Prophecy. Some people like two. I like three because when you draw it, it's fucking amazing. And you also have the three targets for it. Also... Um, you can usually beat over a lot of things with power if you want to just get that extra search off. If somebody tries to get rid of him or something, I mean, you can power him. Mean, he's, he's still really good for that. So yeah, definitely run three. And I wasn't running the next card I'm about to show you guys for the tournament, but I wish I was because it helps you get to your pieces faster, and that piece is definitely Temperance of Prophecy. And that's the two Stoic of Prophecy. So whenever this card gets destroyed, you can add a level 3 spellcaster type monster from your deck to your hand. Or summon it. Wait, no. Yeah, from your deck to your hand. See, you, can, you guys can already tell I wasn't fucking playing with the thing because I don't even know what the fuck it does. But yeah, it's, it's I wish I had this card in there because it makes it so much quicker to get to Temperance of Prophecy. And Temperance is a very huge win condition in the deck. I mean, even if they Veiler Temperance, you can... Tributing is cost, guys. So if they Venus Chain or Veiler and you think that they can actually do that. I mean, they can, but they pretty much waste a Phoenix Chain over there because tributing is the cost, so don't let anybody else tell you otherwise. They're just trying to jip you. And then I have the one. I usually sat it out. Um, you can also get this with um, Stoke of Prophecy, but I usually go for the Temperance. I mean, if you get, I guess if you need an extra spell book, <laughs> um, but you usually don't. I mean, I usually side this out, to be honest. It, it's, pre it's pretty good. It's, it's 1,600, and with power, it's 26, but... Just as a prophecy, it's just in there as another spellcaster target. On to the spells. Pretty uh, standard. I run three spellbook of secrets. Three fate. A lot of people run two. I found myself needing three a lot though, guys. So I definitely recommend running three. It is recyclable, but three is the perfect number, I believe. And I only run two masters. A lot of people like three. I've been thinking about putting it up to three, but I haven't put it up to three because I actually run the two powers. Um, Spellbook of Power is a really good card. It helps you beat over a lot of things. And if you put Spellbook of Power on World of Prophecy, it's fucking 3,900 attack. That's, that is gigantic. Oh my god, it's so nuts. That card is ridiculous. I mean, it's just nuts. After that, two tower. You definitely need to run two, you guys. Run two tower. With so many crazy field spells being out this far, I mean, zombies are getting ready to come out. Ghost tricks are getting ready to come out. Um, dragons have Dragon's Ravine. It's it's nuts, so you definitely need two now. Um, <laughs> you needed two before just to recycle them, but Spellbook Tower is such a good card for Spellbooks' this format, and it helps you get your pluses off, and 
it, it's a really good, it's a really key card in the deck, I think, anyway. So definitely run two spellbook tower. Two spellbook of wisdom. Um, search for that when you need it. Not much to explain there. Two spellbook of the crescent. I was running three, but I didn't really like three. I mean, drawing it first turn is cool, but drawing it late game kind of sucks really bad. I mean, you can banish it if you have a high priestess on board. Um, but if you don't, it's, it's fucking shitty. So I, I kicked it down to two and it seems to work out very fine for me. And one life and one spell book of eternity. I think about running eternity at two because that card's nuts. Um, with how much you're using fate, um, this card is, would usually always be live, like mid to late game. And you also banish with spell, spell book of life. So, I mean... This card's nuts. I might I might take out Crescent altogether just to put in another spellbook of eternity because that card's that card's fucking ridiculous. So that's all for the spellbook cards. And the last spell card is Book of Moon. It's eh, it's a staple. It's good when I draw it. Late game it fucking sucks. <laughs> and this um spellbook deck, I actually liked running traps this format and I saw Frazier Smith's deck profile, and I really liked it, but he, I ran a, a few traps that, that he didn't, so, I don't know. I really like the idea of traps and spellbooks, because nobody ever sees it coming, like, oh shit, there's a fucking mirror force down? I totally thought that was a fate. So, yeah, it, it works out in your favor most of the time. Two Phoenix Wing of Blast, discarding World of Prophecy is really good, and then using Spellbook of Life to get it back. Um, yeah, it's, it's almost, it's not needed, but if you draw World of Prophecy, and you don't <laughs> have a way to get it in the graveyard it really sucks so yeah two phoenix wing one torrential tribute one mirror force one bottomless trap hole one compulse i might take that out um i'm not sure what for yet but i might i'm probably gonna take it out i'm probably actually gonna take it out for a uh, a second venus chain because i i like this card a lot more than this card because if they say they have an ophion on board and you try to compulse it in a pandemic, well, your compulse is gone. So, if you Phoenix Chain, the Ophion, and they pandemic, well, that's fine, because at the end phase, it's going to be Phoenix Chained again. So, they pretty much, you just exhaust their resources, which is really good. Um, and I run one warning. And for my tech, it's been working out really good for me, guys. If you don't have any copies, definitely pick some up, because this card is ridiculous it is amazing it, it gets around so many cards this format and i f i love it it's seven tools of the bandit yes with solemn judgment gone i feel like seven tools of the bandit is a very good uh, replacement people are like oh dark broad but i really don't like the idea of my opponent drawing cards and i think seven tools is just amazing like i was playing glad beasts and he tried to war chariot and i flipped seven tools and it was fucking amazing i mean <laughs> He was he was pretty salty, but it was it was really fun, dude. I, I really love like when you flip this card, it's so amazing because they're just like, oh, solemn morning, and you're just like seven tools, <laughs> and they're like, what? You run that shit? And I'm like, yeah, I just owned you, didn't it? So it's it's a really good card. I really like that. Seven tools of the bandit. It's my personal tech. You don't you don't have to run it, of course, but yeah, it's a really good card. I like it for the extra deck. <laughs> Not much of an extra deck. I guess you could have a couple of other things, but I don't like wasting my High Priestess of Prophecy to get into a Drago Sack or Big Eye or anything else. Um, I know Fraser Smith uses higher fan of Prophecy, but I don't. Um, I personally think it's a waste of two High Priestess. Um, I think having two 2,500 beaters on the board is puts more pressure on your opponent than having one higher fan of Prophecy that just pops the back row. I mean, it's a good card and everything, but I, I just don't like wasting High Priestess. So I chose to only run two cards from my extra deck. You can probably guess what those are. They're pretty standard. It's Gachi Gachi and Shining Elf. So this guy puts in fucking work with World of Prophecy. And this guy is just good. If your opponent doesn't have anything on board, you can just stop a lot of things. So, yeah. Side deck is optional. I mean, it's it's all about personal preference, really. But I guess I can show you guys my side deck. I wasn't going to originally, but... I can show you guys, just just cause, cause I love my subs. So, uh, uh, spellbooks sometimes have a really hard game two matchup. So you're definitely gonna be want to want to be citing a uh, three MST. I mean, it's pretty standard in spellbooks. Everybody usually cites at least two to three MST. I like three because everyone <laughs> DNA surgery and anti spell fragrance and imperial iron wall. I mean, it those all really suck. So, yeah. 
Uh, two Messenger of Peace, this card puts in work against, like, skill drain dragons and shit. They'll waste a blaster just to get over it, and then you can just activate a f another one and be like, haha, fuck yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Messenger of Peace, um, shout out to Nick Tronk for telling me about that card. I wasn't really running it in any of my other side decks, but I, I, it's really amazing. <laughs> With the cost of only 100 life points, it's just, it's too good, like, to not play. After that, I run two Valor in the sideboard. Two Kaiku. Two Trap Stuns. These will be coming out for Royal Decrees. I just can't find any. Two Rivalries. This card's so amazing, this format. Against Constellers. I was playing somebody who had Thunder King Ryo on board, which of course fucked me over. And then he decided to summon Pollux, and he used Pollux. I waited for the Pollux effect, summoned Chaos, and I flipped Rivalry. He chose to keep the Thunder King on board, which is what I had expected. So I summoned Temperance Activated Power and ran that shit over, and it was pretty bad. <laughs> And for the last card, it's only a 14 card extra deck. I'm going to look for one more Shadow Imprisoning Mirror because I really don't like a lot of, like, Infernities. It fucks up Infernities. It fucks up, um, uh, fucking Evil Swarms sometimes. If this is on the, f if this hits the board before Evil Swarms, um, get a chance to go off, then it's a really easy game for you. But I really like the Kaikus especially in this deck because they're really good in the Mirror Match. That's actually what fucked me over at the, uh, the table one was was the kaiku i couldn't activate any of my fates but yeah um i just want to before i finish this video you guys can exit out of the video or whatever you want if you don't want to listen to me talk anymore but <laughs> before i finish this video this video um i want to say sorry to everybody for not uploading for about two weeks it's been a while but i've got a new job and it's it's been rolling out for me um really well and um I've actually just haven't had the time to put up any content for you guys, and I really want to thank you guys for over 570 subscribers. It's just crazy how fast I've been growing, and it's nuts. I'm actually partnered with YouTube now, so that's really awesome. I'm going to be doing my first giveaway once I hit 600 subscribers. I don't know what I should give away. Do you, what do you guys think I should give away? Should I, should I give away some mats? Should I give away a box? Should I do a tin, some special editions, maybe the new Blue Eyes Structure Deck? What do you guys think? And what do you guys want to see more? I really want to know. Do you want to see more duels? Do you want to see more deck profiles? I can do live duels at my locals if you'd like. Um, I can do dueling network duels with a couple of my buddies. I can do regionals coverage. I can do anything you guys want. I can also do... I'm actually going to throw up another um, uh, binder update because I know a lot of people like binder updates and I've been getting a lot of personal messages saying, hey, little flux, let me see your binder. And I'm like, oh, it's not that impressive. It kind of sucks. But... <laughs> Yeah, all the money's in here. <laughs> so, um, I just wanted to say that before I left you guys. Thank you so much for those of you that are, have stuck with me and subscribed. I really appreciate it. And if you haven't already, please hit that like button and the subscribe button. It really helps me out a lot. And um, until next time, guys, take it easy.